I'm going to begin by reading a poem. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul. It sings the tune without the words, and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm. But could abash the little birds that kept them in the wall. I've heard it in the chillest land and all the strangest sea, yet never in adversity the past to come. Now I wish I knew that. I do not wonder. That was written by Emily Dickinson in the mid 1800s, but it's a powerful point, and hope so we'll talk about tonight. I'm standing here as an example of what can happen when you find them. Proof of the importance of gatherings such as these. And proof that even small efforts made by ordinary people can have a lasting effect. We all acknowledge the need out there. We have come here tonight because we are searching for better ways to help those struggling with mental illness, with suicide risk, and of all the other problems that come with it. Better ways to educate those around them, and better ways to provide effective care both in crisis. And in I can tell you right here and now from experience all of this is possible. There's great potential in this room. But I believe the most important, the most powerful stuff can only happen when there's hope. Hope reframes everything. It helps people to step out of their passive role and into a journey of self-directed recovery. Small but important steps. It's not about abandoning outside help. It's about finding your clarity. It's not about finding a cure for the illness. It's about the clarity about who you are. Not the illness, you. Begin to believe that you can live the life that you were meant to live, even if that illness wants to tag along for the ride. <coughs> Hope is a horrible thing, and the best thing about it, it's free. I've lived with mental illness and suicidal thinking and self-harm since my early teens. I know what it's like to sit on the edge of a suicide attempt and somehow manage to turn it around. I know what it's like to stare into the future and feel vulnerable and scared. I know what it's like to be surrounded by people, yet be so very painfully alone. To have an overwhelming need to express myself and find out my voice. To be invisible in the middle of my own life. But then I found hope. For 30 years I hid my illness and bought into that negative image that came with it. But now that I have a hopeful perspective, I can better. I work with professionals and together we create a fluid care package. I don't just sit passively and wait for treatment to bring results. No, I went right there making it happen. It just seems so real in life. Things don't seem so out of reach. I'm learning as I grow, and I'm growing as I learn. And that's how it should be for everybody. Sometimes progress is painfully slow, and in others it takes on momentum, but I'm okay with that. I can't name all the people who have brought up into my life, but I will recognize that for each of them, it was a deliberate choice. They embedded the message in everything they did and everything they said, and little by little, I began to believe too. My illness no longer defines me. Hope does. I'm just here to let you see the difference that you make. It has brought me in less than two years from a closet sufferer <coughs> to an advocate for mental health discussion. My illness is still here. I still have struggles. I still have times of horrible darkness. And there are many thoughts and plans I wish I could all think. None of that has changed, but I have changed. And it's because of the hope that ordinary people like you gave me. And if you're wondering, just walk me up, I would hang on that mental illness. From about 13, I've been living with bipolar disorder, anxiety issues, including social anxiety, self-harm issues, and mild OCD. <coughs> My biggest coping tool through it all, and actually on occasion, the pivotal thing that stopped a suicide attempt, was my ability to vent and 
to learn through journals, writing poetry, or simply scribbling in a nonsensical way. I put some of them in my book when I decided to be totally open about my illness. And I still journal via my blog. It helps me immensely, and I like to think it helps others, that it shares a little hope too. Makes people feel a little less alone. Now I'm not suggesting that everyone does it, but opening up my story to the world has really helped me and it helps get people talking about mental illness and that shares a little hope. I'm not an expert in anything except my own personal experience and that is what I have to give. I'm willing to answer questions, even the ones you might be a little afraid to ask. I'm willing to discuss the mundane minutia of it all and share ways in which change has helped me. If you want to know more about my journey, about the reality of the darkness and the confusion, or the challenges of change and recovery, I'd be more than happy to talk sometime. My story shows one thing, and that's the power of hope. Hope for parity of understanding, for survival, for personal recovery in the lives of ordinary people just like me. People living with an invisible and scary illness. And ordinary people just like you, who obviously care so much 